Ben balden zavela marım bocun, da ki çiğ o pete de jona karınca mı konacı sor. Kozun toki motor zaldo soç, acı sem çorun bocun, ma ki falan ki. Ki ben yapa me badan kone kondo pevajo, sem canım ki sambada loye çeraçı. Çocuğun da monte bay çöki kolu kurdu so. Today again we are talking on Dutch of certainty and till today we have already talked about the general wonder and then from the special wonder we have talked about the first one refuge and then we have already talked about Ikea or what you start to practice so today we will be talking about mandala practice <clears throat> and here Uh, when we are doing the mandala, mm, they will be like, uh, if it's possible, they, uh, you need to have like two mandalas. So one one uh, one is for the practice, so you keep it on your shrine. And the one is uh, for you to make the offering. So there are like two mandalas uh, you will be needed. So one, the one you will be uh, using for the practice is like just one A small mandala only one plate and on top of that they will be like five tormas or something like that so you need to keep that and then the other one just like step by step yeah so we can make the offering and then there are like few rings on top and when you are making the offering of mandala if it's possible then it is best if you can uh, prepare a mandala of a precious item like gold or silver or something like that and if it is a precious item like silver then it doesn't necessarily have to be very big even if it is small then it is still okay but if uh, you don't have like so much of wealth and uh, then you can still use some other things like just uh, wood or stone or something like that or clay and that won't be a problem also But the only problem is sometimes when people are practicing, when people are making offerings, what they do is they say that everything is might, especially in Vajrayana practice. And if it is right from inside of your heart, then it is like that. So even if you are not able to physically offer, but if you are mentally offering, then it's perfect. But sometimes what people do is they take this as an excuse. So even if uh, they have enough, but they will try to offer very little, they will try to make the offering of the worst quality. They will try to make offering as less as they can. And then even when they are making or offering the mandala, they will use very bad quality, very cheap one. And then they will just say that, oh, it's the mind that is the most important. Uh, the mandala, this offering, these are not so important. The main thing is the mind. So they will just say that. But if it is from your heart, then it is like that. But if it is not from your heart, then you are just fooling yourself. You are not going to fool anybody else. You, are, you will not be fooling the uh, your teacher. You will not be fooling, fooling the dharma. What? Who you are fooling you are just fooling yourself when you are eating then if you have the hmm, if you have like oh i like this i don't like this i like uh, i don't like this or something like that. i like this restaurant but i don't like that restaurant when you have like that kind of thinking that it obviously means that uh, everything is not right so you will be able to know that everything is not right When you are wearing something, if you are like, oh, I need to wear this brand, but not this brand. This brand is too cheap. Oh, my level is this brand. If you have like this kind of mm, thinking, then you should know that oh, it's not from your mind. It is from mm, mm, your ego or something. So when you have like that, then even when you are making offering, you cannot just say that or oh, i can just use the lowest quality then i can visualize if you are able to do that then even when you are eating you can just go to a cheap restaurant or cheap food 
And even if you're wearing, you can wear the uh, my GPS brand. I think you can just, oh, everything is mine. You can just think. So with that kind of thinking, then you will be able to know that whether you should be doing, uh, making a cheap offering or good offering. But if you really think that everything is from your mind, then even if it is not, so much of good quality, then it is still going to be okay. And uh, obviously the main important is the motivation or the visualization that you will be making. And after this, <clears throat> uh, when, you have, when you are done with the mandala, then what you need is you need some things to make. Uh, you need some things uh, or to make the offering. So if you are able, you can offer like gold, you can offer like silver, or you can offer like uh, jewelries like that when you're doing the mandala. Uh, for the supreme, uh, if you are very well to do family, uh, and if you are like medium, then you can uh, still offer like shells and semi precious stones like that. And then even if, if you are not able to do that, then you can make offerings of rice, grains, uh, some medicines like that, then you can uh, you can do that. And when you are making offering, if you are able to, then uh, not the silver and gold like that, but when you are making the offering of rice and uh, grains or something like that, then uh, we think or uh, we say that it should at least be like the quality that, that you are eating if possible much better than what you are eating if not possible then at least what you are eating or what you have in your home sometimes what people do is when they are making the offering of mandala or when they are uh, offering butter land what they do is uh, when they when it is for themselves then they use the best quality so many uh, different categories we have here like organic non-GM or whatever, whatever. But when they are like making offerings, then you will, uh, they will use the cheapest one. So if you do like that, then it obviously uh, means that we don't have so much faith in the Dharma. If we don't that have that much faith in Mandala, it means that <clears throat> we still treat ourselves as much uh, more worthy than the uh, triple gems. Uh, so you should consider that when uh, you are doing the mandala. And Sarvajya, Majjana, Jusabhana, Jusabhana, And after you are done uh, with the mandala, so you will have, if you have made, uh, if you are uh, offering with the gold or silver, or if you are offering the conch shell or the precious stone, or if you are offering rice, grains, or whatever, then you should not be, hmm, you should not be using them for your uh, personal use. What you can do is you can uh, offer it uh, to the Buddhas or you can offer it to the temples or you can just make, uh, you can give it to uh, like homeless people or uh, poor people like that. So that would be much better. And <clears throat> So first we take the practice mandala, the small one, and then uh, we will, uh, we have to do some visualization, and then we have to do some prayers like Om Basamita, Om Sabawa, and uh, there's some text to be read, and I think it will be taught uh, to you by your resident Lama or whoever there is, uh, whoever is close with you, so they can teach you how to read that. And when you are doing the, making that uh, practice mandala, uh, you, I think most of you have already seen it. So it's like um, a bowl, upside down bowl. And on, on top of that, there are like five dormas. So here, when you are uh, making offering to this mandala, what you have to visualize is, you have to visualize that these five are the five Buddha families. And when you are making the offering, you are making the offering to them. Or you can just visualize like uh, the one in uh, doing the refuge, the one is the root guru and hidam and bodhisattva, text and 
you know, bodhisattvas or, or dharma protectors like this. So you can visualize that, or you can visualize the five Buddha families. So it's up to you. And sometimes when you are in the puja and when they is making offering, and you might have seen sometimes people offer this also to Rinpoche's or high lamas like that. And during that time, then you don't need to visualize like that one. If it is like that, then what you need to visualize is you need to visualize that you are offering uh, the Mount Meru and the four continents and sun, the moon, like that. So you have to visualize that. But here, when you are using this as a practice mandala, then you have to visualize the, the five Buddha families or like the one in uh, during when we did the refuge. And now you visualize uh, them. And then from the uh, uh, three place, like uh, the uh, forehead, the throat, and the heart, light radiates out from Om Ahum. And uh, they request, or they invite so many other uh, wisdom deities, and you invite them, and then they come to you, and they become uh, inseparable from these five Thomas and they become uh, like um, the five Buddhas or like the one in refuge. And the reason why we do this is why we invite wisdom deities is because we are very, very ignorant. And uh, because what we do is uh, we can buy these mandalas. We can just, and especially here in Nepal, they are, and especially here in Bauda, there are so many shops where you can just buy these mandalas. And sometimes what we do is uh, we can just buy only the lower part and then the top one, we can just make some tormas. So if it is not already on them, so there are two ways. But what we think is uh, we have just bought it from the shop. Um, I made the tormas myself. So how can this be a Buddha? How can this be the five Buddha families? How can this be? My root guru. So sometimes we have talked and we don't have that much of faith or trust in that. So what we do is, and then after we place it, we try to visualize that uh, the wisdom deities or all these uh, uh, special things uh, somewhere in the heaven or wherever. And then we try to make visualize and then invite them and make them inseparable from this mandala. So that is why we try to invite all these wisdom deities. And <clears throat> after that, you start uh, your practicing or, uh, or you start the offering. And if you are not able to have like two mandalas, then it's uh, you can just only have the mandala for the offering and you don't need this. You can just do the visualization. But if you are able to, then it's very important to have the practice mandala and the offering mandala and uh, if the both of these are like two different uh, materials or two different qualities then it's better to use the better one as the practice mandala and then the lower quality or the uh, not so good one as the offering mandala so you can do that and <clears throat> then uh, you hold the uh, so you place that this mandala on top of your drawing and if possible then like a stand and then on top of the stand you place the practice mandala and then you hold the offering mandala and then when you are holding the offering mandala so uh, you hold it on your left hand so yes, uh, usually you put it like this and then you hold it like this the mandala will be here something like this and you can hold like the flower or rice or whatever you are offering, you uh, put them in your right hand and then you try to wipe the mandala like this with your wrist. And you try to wipe it as clean as possible with your wrist. And then uh, they are saying that <clears throat> in previous times, long time back, there were so many great lamas, so many great practitioners who were making this offering so many times that they were always cleaning the mandala and then they hurt themselves from the wrist. And then when uh, this wrist got hurt, then they 
paint it like this from upper wrist. I don't know what you say this. So, and then again, they cleaned it with this. And then they again got some guts or whatever uh, on here. Then after that, then they moved it here. They cleaned it with this upper part of the palm or whatever. And then again, they moved it from lower part of the wrist, upper part like this. Uh, they were making so much uh, offering of mandalas. And here, when we are doing this, it's not like the mandala needs to be cleaned. It's not that. The reason why we are cleaning it is because here we are visualizing that we are cleaning ourselves because we are filled with so many negative emotions. We are filled with so many defilements. We are filled with so much poisons. So we are visualizing that we are cleaning ourselves from all these negative emotions. So that is why we are just uh, from, as a symbol, we are just trying to clean the mandala. And then if they are like some black spot, then we try to clean it as much as we can with our wrist. And we are trying that whatever um, dark um, emotions that we have or like negative emotions that we have. So we are trying to uh, all the untidiness or the uncleanliness on the mandala represents our negative emotions so we are trying to clean that now let's one and then here when we are um, doing the offering of mandala they are so like especially <clears throat> like two different types of mandala and uh, we have the mandala as it is set in kala chakra and then uh, there's one set in Abhidharma. So there are like two different types of mandala. And even in you know, from these two, what we will be doing is, uh, since we are like practicing or like uh, preliminary practice for Mahamudra, so we can do whichever uh, we want to do. So there's not much of difference, but here, uh, uh, since the second one is more famous, uh, is more than the most of the people. So uh, usually what we do is uh, here it is uh, described as like it is said in the Abhidharma text. And then you, know, you recite Om Bhaza Pume And then here it comes uh, all these uh, offerings, uh, the 37 ones, it comes one by one. So when you read the text, then it's very really easy to understand. And then the way uh, you do that. Mm. Uh, they are like where you place your hand, where you put the grains or jewels or whatever. So uh, I think it would be much better if you are able to ask your resident lama how to do that, how you place that, and then you can also have a, get a picture. There's already like a picture, and with all the numbers like number one, two, three, four. So you you will be able to know that, and then you can visualize each one like one by one and uh, they are like 37 and obviously since we are like just beginners we have just started to practice and we are very new to practice even if we have heard so many teachings for so many years some of you might have been practicing for 10 years 20 years 30 years maybe more than that but still when we are practicing we are very very new to the practice we might have been hearing the teaching we might have been receiving the empowerment for so many years, but when in practice, we haven't practiced so much. We are just like uh, our kindergarten student. We are very, very new, and it's very difficult to visualize all this. So uh, if we are not able to visualize all this 37, then what we can do is we can do the short one. And uh, when we are reciting, we to read the short one, so she put you to me the time to have mentioned the game. Sangish in the middle of a token number, she let you go. So, yeah, we use this one. So, just like that, when we are reciting, if we are not able to visualize all this 37 one, what we can do is we can just visualize this short one, like the golden earth. Uh, sometimes I think it is said golden earth, I'm not exactly sure what is translated that as. And then the mom, mountains, and then the four continents, and the sun and the moon. So if we are only uh, able to visualize this, then that is still okay. So and it is 
almost impossible to visualize everything that is uh, uh, the detailed one. It's almost impossible for us to meditate on that. And the main thing is when you <clears throat> are doing this, uh, obviously it is the motivation that is the most important. But uh, as I have told you before, you shouldn't be just taking motivation as an excuse and then use uh, the lowest quality, cheapest quality, the least expensive, the cheapest one like that. So if you are able to, then uh, uh, the better the offerings, uh, the more merit that we gain. And then when we are talking about uh, merit, we have this to accumulate merit. Um, so now. And from all these different types of accumulation of merit, uh, we think that uh, this type of uh, offering or this type of uh, accumulation of merit is extremely beneficial. <clears throat> and after this uh, mandala, there is like a small uh, extra teaching here. So here, uh, it is said that when we are like practicing, it's very, very important to have some uh, accumulation of merit. And if you don't have accumulation of merit, then it's almost impossible to gain enlightenment. And uh, sometimes we might have accumulated merit in our previous life or lives before that. Uh, sometimes, sometimes we may not have accumulated any uh, merit in our previous life. So it is very important to make some accumulation in this life and the more accumulation of merit we have accumulated, the easier it is to know the essence of Mahamudra. It is easier to gain enlightenment. So it is very, very important uh, to gain uh, this uh, accumulation of merit. And then here in this text of Dr. Certainty, there is like a short description about the six parameters. So from because uh, continuing with the accumulation. So the first one, as I think all of you know, that is the generosity. And when we are talking about generosity and here we are all describing all these six perfection in three different categories. So here uh, talking about generosity, the first one is uh, the, yeah, the first one is uh, so like making offering of uh, belongings of wealth. So uh, when we are able to make offerings or when we are able to give like uh, what we have, like food, like belongings, like clothes, like that, then that is like the first step of generosity. And then the second one is offering of Dharma. And if you are able to teach, if you are able to guide, if you are able to show other people uh, the benefit of Dharma like that without expecting anything in return. Because sometimes when people are teaching, they are expecting uh, to gain some fame and sometimes they are expecting to gain uh, some rich, uh, something like that, then it's not so beneficial. But if you are able to uh, offer or teach the Dharma, then it's very, very important uh, to be able to give that. And then the third one is helping others from the fear, I guess. So when somebody is very afraid, like because they are sick or they are afraid uh, of the dark or afraid of, being, or, or afraid of falling or something like that. And then if you are uh, or sometimes they are afraid because of they are not able to follow their uh, discipline or something like that. Then if you are able to do, if you are able to help, then it is very, very good. So even in generosity, they are like roughly three different categories. And then uh, the second one, uh, the second one, discipline. And then the, even uh, the second one, uh, discipline, the first one is uh, being away from all the wrongs or being away from all these 10 uh, sins, like the sins of the body, sins of the speech, and sins of the mind. 
So the first one is being away from them. And then um, the second one is um, practicing the Dharma. So not only uh, just being away from the sins, but being able to practice. So here it's so the second one is trying to help or trying to practice uh, as much as just not being away from the sense but trying to practice whatever we can and even if it is like a very small amount of since we try to remove them in the first discipline and even if it is like a very small amount of dharma that we can do still uh, we should not consider or we should not say oh this is just very small or this is very tiny amount of dharma we should not be saying like that we should try to even no matter how small it is no matter how small if the sin is we try to remove we try not to do that no matter how small the dharma is we, start, we still try to do that and then the uh, third one is we try to benefit other uh, sentient beings, no matter how small way we can help or no matter how big, in a big way we can help, we try to help them. So that is like the second one, Jimba Sudin. And then the third one is patience. And when we are talking about patience, again, we have like three categories here. So the first one is when somebody is telling bad things to you or hitting you or punishing you and we still try to maintain our patience we try not to be angry with them so that is the first one and then the second one uh, when we are practicing the dharma sometimes we face so many difficulties especially most of the friends that i have when they are doing the prostrations they say it's, it's so difficult it's so much tiring uh, like that and but we try to have patience we try not to be disheartened because of all these difficulties and no matter how sick we become no matter how tiring it becomes we still uh, keep on practicing like that and uh, the third one is uh, uh, when we are practicing and sometimes we try to not try to sometimes we lose faith and when somebody just prays for us uh, we think that if it is not working then we say oh the prayer is not working it's useless something like that or the mantra is not useful or maybe the lama's blessing is not useful and um, so we shouldn't be saying that we should have patience that they are going to work uh, sometimes uh, people uh, we think that or oh, if we are able uh, if we are practicing Mahamudra then it is very difficult we won't be able to practice we won't be able to see the nature of the mind then we shouldn't be disheartened and we should have patience with that so that is like the third one and uh, talking about uh, the second one like having patience when we are uh, practicing then even me when I was in retreat uh, when I was doing the prostration, uh, prostrations and after like eight to ten days after the prostrations even I had so much difficulties I, uh, I became quite unhealthy I guess um, because it's quite a lot of work because when we are in retreat we have to do like four sessions of prostrations so early in the morning so there's like almost two hours of prostrations and then after breakfast, there's like three hours of prostrations. And then after lunch, we have like again two hours of prostrations. And again in the evening, we have like two hours of prost uh, prostrations. So that is like six, nine, I guess, nine hours of prostrations a day. And that is quite tiring. And even when we talk about all these Olympians or world class athletes, I think they practice like maybe four hours, five hours, six hours a day. Uh, of uh, physical exercise, but there in retreat, all of a sudden we were like doing almost eight to nine hours of prostrations a day, and then obviously my body couldn't take it, and I became quite unwell. But I think it was still very, very helpful for me because what I thought that 
um, after, uh, but when I was sick, I was quite depressed. But after a few days, then I got much better and better. Then I could again start doing uh, little by little by little. And I could do more and more. And then the more I could do, then I felt much more happier, the much more peaceful. And then I thought, oh, now I'm so lucky that I'm able to practice or I'm able to do the prostrations. Or I'm so fortunate that I'm able to do the uh, prostrations now because when I was not able uh, to do for a few days, then it was quite disheartening. And uh, all my rooted friends, and my teachers, they were all very, very helpful when I was not so well. And I feel uh, tremendous thankful to all of them because they all helped me uh, when I was not so well. And after that, when I was, uh, after that, uh, when I practiced, everything went quite well. So I have uh, tremendous faith that when we are practicing, they might be some difficulties, but if we just uh, ignore them, if we, then I don't think it's going to be so much of a problem. And uh, so we have talked about the three generosity, discipline, and patience. Now, that the fourth one is diligence. And <clears throat> The fourth one is diligence. Uh, diligence. And even in diligence, uh, when we are practicing Dharma, so even uh, uh, if we are practicing the Dharma, which is very, very of small benefit or small accumulation, then we should not be ignoring them. So we should still have diligence with them. And even if it is like very, very big, uh, sometimes you feel disheartened. And when we are talking about seeing the nature of mind or knowing what is Mahamudra or all these big, big things, then we sometimes feel disheartened. So even with that, we shouldn't be disheartened. We should have patience with that. We should continue practicing and we should have patience. So that is the second one. And uh, the third one is when we have entered the gate of Dharma, then we shouldn't be disheartened in the middle of the path. We should try to practice as until we can let it, so we should be decided. So that is the third patience. And <clears throat> the fifth one is, I think sometimes people say meditation, so we can still say meditation. Uh, and uh, the meditation, so the first one is we get so used to with our and we are practicing or when we are uh, that is the first one and then the second one when we do practice again and again we meditate again and again we will um, get some get i think we yeah, get some clairvoyance or some magical powers or something like that from the mind so even if we have that uh, we still practice and so yeah and even because uh, the third one is even if we get not only like for ourselves but sometimes because of the benefit of uh, all this uh, practice uh, uh, sometimes we are able to help uh, other sentient beings and we are able to do that and we are still certain we should still be like uh, we shouldn't be feel so much right something that we should still continue uh, practicing and the last one is uh, oh sorry we got disconnected and i don't know where we got disconnected so i think we will again talk uh, the last perfection or the perfection of this term and even uh, here in this term we have like three different categories the first one is the wisdom of knowing the nature of the mind. So that is the first one. And then the second one is wisdom of uh, knowing the karma cause and effect. Uh, so that is the second one. And then the third one, uh, the wisdom of uh, <coughs> being able to 
benefit other sentient beings. So that is like the third uh, wisdom. So yeah, for all these uh, six perfection, perfections here, we have like a small uh, different categories of um, uh, three different categories for each perfection. So it is like that. And then, uh, and here when we are talking about uh, all the six perfections, so uh, here it is said that you know, the first two, like the perfections of uh, generosity and the perfections of discipline are like the accumulation of merit and the perfection of wisdom is like the accumulation of uh, wisdom. And the three other one, the perfections of patience and the perfections of perfection of diligence and the perfection of meditation are like uh, both accumulation of merit and accumulation of wisdom. So here yeah, we just talked about um, mandala and some uh, very small talk on the six perfections and their classification or their uh, different division or whatever i don't know how you can say that and <clears throat> so it is very important uh, we know this and then when we are offering the mandala also uh, we will be accumulating lots of merit and uh, this is like the best accumulation of merit and it is not going to be of waste because uh, when you are offering the mandala you are not only offering it to someone but you are trying to make this offering to the, all the buddhas all the bodhisattvas and everyone and you and even when you are offering you are not only offering a small amount of things but you are trying to visualize that you are offering everything you are trying to Visualize that you are offering the four continents, the mountains, the sun, the moon, and everything. So even uh, the place where you are offering, it's huge. And even what you are offering is extremely huge. It's not like, a, it's not only the things that in physical condition you are offering. It's, the men, it's also the mental aspect that you are offering. So it's very, very huge. And because it's so huge, uh, when you are offering from your mental aspect. So even the accumulation of merit that you gain is extremely beneficial. And <clears throat> and uh, the main thing is the mental aspect. Yeah, so because you are offering it from your mental part, so you will also not be feeling so much of pride when you are making this offering. Because sometimes when we are able to help someone or when you are offering some like belongings uh, to the Buddhas or to the Sanghas or sometimes when you are making offerings to the like beggars, then sometimes you feel very, very proud. Oh, I was able to do this. I was able to help them. So something like that, you feel proud. And if you feel proud, then it's not so much of use. The accumulation of merit that you have gained will go into waste. But here, uh, the main aspect is the motivation. So since you are doing it from a motivation, so you will also not feel so much of proud and you are making an offering to so many Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So it's uh, you're offering to so many beings, you're offering so many things. So the accumulation will be of huge benefit. So that is why it is very important to do this practice. And when you have accumulated merit, then when you are practicing, everything will become much more easier. So that is why we do the mandala practice. And <clears throat> mm -hmm. I think we will uh, stop here. And that's all the mandala for today. And tomorrow we will be talking on Guru Yoga. And we will stop here for today. And we'll do the dedication prayer. โอ้เดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวบอกกูก็มาแล้วด้วยชื่อเบอร์ 3 บอยู่ในการกับเบอร์ 3 ชื่อ